Hey, Chad Carter here with LearnHalllens.com and ChadCarter.net. And uh, this week, I'm going to create a tutorial. And it's going to uh, just quickly get started with the Hollow Toolkit. So the first part here is getting the Hollow Toolkit installed. And next week, we will deploy to the Hollow Lens itself. So let's get going. So we have Hollow Toolkit Deployment Test. We'll hit Create Project. Okay, now that Unity is loaded, let's go ahead and bring in the Hollow Toolkit itself. So this is simply PowerShell. I am going to uh, make sure I have the latest from GitHub. So I'm going to do a git pull here. And I do have the latest. And where this is at, you can actually get this from github.com forward slash Microsoft slash hollow toolkit dash unity. Also, I have a um, resource list that you can go to at chd.me. And when you go to chd.me, it's going to take you to my blog. And over here is the ultimate HoloLens resource list. And uh, inside of here, I have the hollow toolkit on ways that you get that installed. And come down here to Unity. And the very first thing in Unity is the Microsoft Hollow Toolkit for Unity. Okay. Uh, but again, that resource list, I keep that updated. Uh, so if you're into HoloLens development, you come down here and actually uh, be notified when this page is updated. Okay. But over here on GitHub, you can uh, say clone or download and actually um, grab it that way. If you want to, you could download the, the zip. The other thing there is, is there's the Hollow toolkit.download site and from here you can actually grab it as a unity package okay so there's the different ways that you can actually grab the hollow toolkit uh, for me I'm just going to bring up a explorer window and over here in assets let me close this down minimize this now that I have my assets I'm going to bring in I'm not going to bring in the examples or the test. So I'll get rid of the examples and the test, but I'll bring in the Hollow Toolkit itself and the unit test. I'll just drag that over here in Assets. Once you bring in the Hollow Toolkit, We'll get prompted uh, with this question to force text asset serialization. Serialization, we'll go ahead and do that uh, to make this happy. Next, now we actually have the Hollow Toolkit here installed. That's all it takes to actually install the Hollow Toolkit. Next thing I do is um, come here to the Hollow Toolkit menu item because that just got added to Unity when we brought in the Hollow Toolkit itself. And I'm going to go to Configure and Apply Project Settings. And I'm going to hit Apply. And this is going to, and I'm going to reload the project. And this is going to set up everything inside of Unity that we need. Get this out of the way. Okay, so Unity is loaded now. If we go and actually take a look at our build settings, you can see it now we're using the Windows Store. And we're set as a Universal 10 app with Direct3D. If we go over here to Player Settings, Other Settings, you'll see a Virtual Reality Supported is checked and Windows Holographic is selected. So that's what checking that one box did. It set all those pieces of information. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, just going to create a new folder here, and I'll just call it Scenes. And we'll save this scene in here, and we'll just call it Main. Okay. Now what I could do, notice this camera, the default camera here. I could come up here to Hall Toolkit and say Configure and say Apply Scene Settings. And it's going to update our camera information. So when I hit apply scene settings, our skybox is going to turn black 
because the background is going to be black and the skybox is going to be solid color instead. It's going to change our field of view down here and change our clipping planes. Uh, so just so you can see that, I don't ever use this, but I want to at least just show you what it's there for. Um, so we can say apply hall and scene settings. And it's going to ask us, move the cam to origin, clear the black, clipping plane, field of view, sure. And it went to origin, solid color, went to black, clipping planes were changed. Okay, So that's all apply scene settings does. What I actually do, I don't even use main camera, I just delete it immediately. And then the hall toolkit has a hall lens camera. So I just look, search for hall lens and drag it over here. The reason why I use this camera from the Hollow Toolkit is because besides having the uh, scene stuff applied like it needs to, you know, origin, solid color, black, clipping planes is set correctly, it also adds in this manual gaze control so we can uh, use this inside of the Unity Editor within our testing. And it makes it a whole lot better. And it has gaze controls and things like that for the um, Hollow lens itself to work well. So. That uh, is what I use. So again, we'll just come here and say save scene. And let's go ahead and add in uh, something here in the project uh, because the main point of this video is to get a hollow toolkit installed and so we can actually use it inside of Unity. Um, when I, anytime I bring in a brand new project using the hollow toolkit, first thing I bring is the camera. The next thing I bring in is the input manager. Okay, so I just search for input manager and bring in that prefab. Next thing I bring in is the uh, a cursor. So I'll usually use the default cursor. There's also a basic cursor that you could grab as well. Uh, they have uh, different reasons. Uh, we'll just get rid of this HTTP error. I'm not sure what just caused that, but either way, I've, I've seen that recently and it doesn't seem to have any, any ill effect it could be just to build on my machine right now. But I definitely always bring in those three. And most most of the time, I also go and bring in the spatial uh, mapping prefab. And spatial mapping prefab is now here. And I could work with spatial mapping down if, if I wanted to. Um, I'm actually not going to, so I'm just going to delete that from here. But usually, whenever I start a haul in this project, those are the four things I do. I delete the or the four things I'll bring in. I delete the original camera, I'll bring in the Hall lens camera, the input manager, one of the cursors, whichever one I want. Most of the time I use default cursor. Uh, depending on what you're doing, you might actually would prefer a basic cursor. And then if I'm using spatial mapping data, I'll bring in spatial mapping. In this scenario here, um, we won't necessarily do that, so I'll just delete that. And save project and save scene. Okay. And, you know, clear this console error. I will go ahead and just create a cube as a 3D object. And I'll just put a 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.2 for the size of that thing. And um, move the Z back to uh, like one in front of the user. And probably change the rotation around a little bit. Uh, my We'll do like one, one and a half in front of the user. So again, we'll save the scene and save the project. And that's all it really takes to get the Hollow Toolkit in here. So we can go ahead and hit play. And so I had the Windows Holographic uh, stuff enabled earlier. Uh, and it can't connect to that, so that's what's complaining about there. No worries there. But the great thing about the input manager is I can like hold down my left shift, and it's as if I was trying to tap. I don't have anything uh, associated to the tap, uh, but there it is. So if you're going to work with the Hall lens in Unity, you definitely want to bring in the Hollow Toolkit. And hopefully this showed you one of the ways to bring in the Hollow Toolkit. Another thing I could do is come back out here to the Hollow Toolkit builds, download the Unity package. And then I'm going to just drag in that package over here on top of assets. And you see the package doesn't have the examples, but does have the test 
you want to bring in the test. Um, so you have multiple ways to bring that in. If I want to bring this, I can just say import and actually bring in that from the Unity package as well. So I personally like bring, pulling it down from GitHub and, and just copying it into my project. Uh, but a lot of people prefer to grab the asset package itself. So whichever way you prefer, it's all good. If you do want your examples, then you will need to grab it from GitHub because the, the package doesn't automatically have the examples in there. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this week's video. Next week, we're actually going to take this sample project and we'll go through the steps it takes to deploy it. And we'll just deploy it to the emulator here. So I hope you have a fantastic week and I'll see you in the next video.